So, seventh grade science exam review, spring 2021. So, the, your review will be due on May 24th or May 26th, depending on which day you have your final exam review. This key will be posted in Canvas on Friday, May 21st. It will be a, a, into an egg puzzle. Your assignment will be in Canvas, and you must complete that assignment. So, we're going to go through the five sections of it. Um, as well as these five sections that will be on your test for uh, Monday and Wednesday of next week. Remember, you must be present on those days to take your exam. If you are not, you will receive a zero for your semester exam grade. And then we'll have to come to summer school to take your test. So, section one is over dichotomous keys. So, questions one through uh, four are on the board. So, number one, the dichotomous key, di in dichotomous means two. A dichotomous key helps to identify an organism based on the physical characteristics, so how it looks on the outside. So, when we think of a dichotomous key, it, we're looking for physical characteristics or physical traits. A dichotomous key uses a series of yes or no questions or options directing the user to identify the correct organism. The dichotomous key for the tree is provided below. It says a hiker found a tree that has large cones and single sharp needles. So the very first one, we always start at number one. And so um, it says has small or large. So it's, we wrote large, so we're going to go to t um, 1B. And then we're going to go to number two. Number two says are the needles single or are they in groups? This one says it is single. So we go two, three. And then we have our option either spruce or fir. So it says they have sharp ends or they have round ends. This one says it has sharp ends. So the answer is spruce. So the correct answer should be A. Okay. If it says, which of the following characteristics would be most likely be helpful in identifying a butterfly using a dichotomous key? So, um, it migrates, is not a physical characteristic, hanging on the branch uh, to the rest is not, fluttering their wings is not. So the only way will be their hind wings have tail extensions. So that's like if it has a swirly part to the end of it. Okay. Okay. So these are cell extension that be a physical characteristics. All right. So that is one through five. Number six. Number six. It says, true or false, most dichotomous keys use physical characteristics or observations. This is true. When using a dichotomous key to identify an organism, objects always st uh, start with step number one. Okay? So, section two is talking about nothing but cells. Okay? So, the first thing I did was I labeled the following cell parts and then I described them. So I'm going to show you the descriptions, and then we're going to also show the labels. Okay. So the nucleus is found in the center. So the nucleus is here. It controls everything in all of the organelles within this structure. The cytoplasm is the jelly-like material that holds all the organelles, so they sit in it like jello. The cell membrane allows things to enter or exit the cell. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the animal cell as well as the powerhouse of the plant cell. So this type of cell is an animal cell. The dots represent ribosomes which make our protein. The vacuole is not pictured in this picture but the vacuum stores water as well as waste. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short, transports those proteins and is normally found around
the nucleus, the Golgi body processes and packages those proteins like EPS and FedEx, the lysosome, it breaks down and it also recycles those um, broken down particles for future reference or to be expelled from the body. So when you think of lysosome, think of lysol. Okay. Number nine, it says what is the difference between a unicellular and multicellular organism? Unicellular is made up of one cell. It carries out of all the functions. While a multicellular organism is made up of multiple cells and it takes many cells to have specialized functions or jobs. Unicellular also cannot be seen with the naked eye, so they must be looked at under a microscope, while multicellular can be seen without the naked eye. Okay. Number 10, it says list the organelles that only plant cells have and describe their function. Two of the main ones are chloroplasts, which allows the plant to go through photosynthesis. And then you have the cell wall, which makes uh, the plant stiff. And hold its shape. Number 11, it says, what are the three parts of the cell theory? Number one, all living things are composed of cells. B, cells are the basic unit of all structure and function. C, all cells come from pre-existing cells, so they don't just magically happen. Number 12, it says define the following terms. You have chloroplasts, cell wall, vacuole, cell membrane, and nucleus. A, the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. B, the cell wall causes the cell to be rigid and is affected by turgor pressure or the water pressure within it. C, the vacuole stores water, it stores some food, and it also stores some waste products within the cell. The cell membrane, again, allows certain things in and out, like a door. And then the nucleus control is the control center of the cell tells everything what to do. Number 13 and 14, it says explain the difference between plant and animal cells. The plant cell is square in shape or rectangular. It contains chloroplasts, a cell wall, and a large central vacuum. Okay. While the animal cell is more circular in shape, it only has the mitochondria, and it has smaller vacuoles, okay? So it doesn't contain the chloroplast or a cell wall, okay? But it does contain a vacuole. We contain many vacuoles. 14 says what cell produces its own food through photosynthesis? These are plant cells. And the site of photosynthesis is again the chloroplast. Section three is talking about genetics and all things that relate to genetics. So the main thing is you must know the definition of these terms and how to identify them if they were in question form. So numbers 15 through 22. Fifteen allele is one or two or more alternative forms of a gene, so that's either a X or a Y, or blue eyes, brown eyes, or straight hair or curly hair. Sixteen dominant, a dominant trait is a trait that hides other traits, so there's only going to be a dominant or a recessive. Recessive is a hidden trait, that means it will hide or be masked by the dominant trait. Heterozygous carries different alleles from the parent. So example of this would be big D, little d, or capital E, and lowercase e. So hetero means different, while homozygous means the same. So it carries two copies of the same allele. So two small.
small m's, which are recessive, are two capital letters, which are dominant. So homozygous are the same, heterozygous are different. So DNA, it is the blueprint of an organism. 21. The gene is a section of the DNA, which are found in the chromosomes. In number 22, heredity is the transfer of traits from one generation to another generation. Number 23, trait. A trait can be either inherited or learned, but it's normally a physical appearance. The genotype are the letters that make up. So that's your G's, your small B's, your capital A's. While the phenotype is the physical appearance, for example, blue eyes, a widow's peak, or curly hair. Okay? Says how many chromosomes do human sex cells have? They have 23. They each have half of the chromosomes. How many chromosomes do other human body cells have? They have 46. It says how is the genotype related to the phenotype? So the genotype are the alleles that are shown, while the phenotype are the physical characteristics that is shown based off of those genotypes, whether it's a dominant trait or a recessive trait. Then you have to remember how to read a Punnett square. So this says it's homozygous, recessive. So homo means same, recessive means small letter. So it's going to be little r, little r. While heterozygous plants are capital and lowercase. So this one is going to be a 50-50, where you're going to have two that are round and two that are going to be wrinkled seeds. Okay. Section 4 of your review is over types of reproduction. So, types of reproduction are as follows. Compare and contrast sexual reproduction to asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is slow, it's uh, different um, alleles, it also has two parents, it requires more time and more energy, but it is more diverse. While asexual is faster, it makes an exact copy or a clone. It only has one parent, and it is less diverse. Number 31, it says, what does genetic diversity mean? It means genetic differences. And it says, which type of reproduction produced the most genetic diverse, and why? It is sexual reproduction, because you have multiple versions to choose from. You have a different pair. So then we have the five types of asexual reproduction. We have budding. It's an organism formed uh, from a growth and then falls off and then grows again and falls off and completes the process and continues on. Binary fission, the cell divided into two cells after duplicating and then it continues to do that until it creates more cells. Fragmentation is when it splits into pieces and each piece grows into its own identical organism. Regeneration is when it grows back after an injury, so like a starfish or a jellyfish. Okay? And then you have vegetable reproduction or vegetable propagation, which is the process by which organisms come without production of seeds or spores. So it comes off the roots, like strawberries, like the spider plant. Section 5 is over levels of organization. So number 37, it says, what is an organism? An organism is more, uh, more than two organ systems that are working together. What is an organ system? Two or more organ systems, I mean, organs working together. What is it makes up an organ? More than one tissue. Where can you find different organs all over your body? Uh, list 
at least two organs that are found in plants. So you have the stem and leaf. You also have the roots. Okay. It says list two examples of organs found in animals. So I listed the heart and your bones. Okay. You also have your eyes. Okay. Your skin is one. It says what it what makes up a tissue. One or more cells working together makes up every tissue. And then it says list the types of cells. There are three main types. You have animal, you have plant cells, and you have bacteria cells. Remember, viruses are not cells. They are not living things. They must have a host. Okay, section six is over the last thing that we covered this year, which is body systems. So the main function of the excretory system is to remove waste products from the body. Uh, what are four ways in which wastes are excreted from our bodies? It is excreted as urine, sweat, blood, as well as oil that comes through your skin. It says what two gases are exchanged through your respiratory system? That is the oxygen and carbon dioxide. Also can be seen as O2 and CO2. Okay? Number 44. It says label the diagram using the word artery, capillaries, and veins. So the artery goes towards, because it's normally red in color, the vein is normally goes away from the body and towards the heart. So this is normally blue in color. And then the gas exchange happens in the capillaries, which are a mixture of the vein and the artery. Okay, These are also wrapped around the alveoli within your respiratory system. Alright? Next page. It says list these functions of the integumentary system or your skin. So it acts as a barrier against infection. Okay? It regulates your body temperature. Um, it removes excretory waste like your sweat. Okay, it protects you against UV radiation, and then it also produces vitamin D for your body. Okay, what is the function of the digestive system to break down food to create energy? Is the main function of the digestive system. Okay. The skeletal system's main job is to protect your organs and allow for movement. The muscular system allows for movement. It provides stability. It maintains your body shape as well as temperature. And it also or is it also um, aids in digestion okay uh, what is the function of the nervous system it gathers and interprets information and then it helps to maintain homeostasis and then number 50 what is the function of the endocrine system it regulates body activities as well as controls all of your hormones.